Hello and welcome to the NCR Shelter Management Tool Advanced User Orientation. This is for folks that want to test out all the capabilities within the tool, GIS professionals, or anyone looking to get the most out of the application. Obviously this won't cover everything that exists within the tool, so again we want you to explore and test everything out. If something doesn't work, obviously please let NAPSIC Foundation know. Uh, the first thing I want to make everyone aware of is the attribute table. There's multiple ways you could get to it, but the easiest way is to click on this bottom arrow at the bottom of the screen. This will bring up the attribute table. The attribute table can be filtered in a lot of different ways. You could filter by map extent, or it will just show you all the pieces of data that are in the background. Right now, I don't have any filters on, so it's going to list the attribute table for everything. This is a really good tool for local jurisdictions to look at their own shelters and see what's been updated and gaps in information. If we do filter by map extent, it will only show what's in the screen. If I zoom in up to Boulder, it's going to change the attribute table respectively. Once you're in here, if you want to know uh, which shelters have the most capacity, you can do ascending or descending by each column, especially the ones that have values associated with it. Um, ones that do not have any associated capacity will show up at the top, so that helps you identify which shelters need capacity. You could also do an overall statistics button, which will show you the sum of all your capacity. So based on this screen right here, there's a total capacity of the shelters of 3,400 plus, and it also shows you the minimum, maximum, and average. So this gives you a good opportunity to see what your average shelter will have. Obviously, if we don't filter by map extent and it has all of the capacity for the entire region, right now there's a lot more blank shelters, but now we'll start having all of the jurisdictional shelters. So we have one from Boulder and we have one from Jefferson County here. Again, if you do statistics, it will now calculate all the sum of capacity that everyone has entered. So right now the NCR has 14,000 plus of capacity and then also the minimum, maximum, and average. Again, giving a better understanding of what type of shelters are out there. Another way to filter if it's not by map extent is to use the filter tool. So let me go ahead and drag this down a bit. Uh, as we've shown before, you can use any of these filters that are already pre-configured for you. Uh, if you filter by county, say Adams County, and you pull up the attribute table, it's only going to show you Adams County. So that's just another way that you can access the attribute table and see shelters that exist. Um, Onto the, the filter mechanism, uh, we've shown that you can filter by county and you could also do multiple filters. So you could do filter by county and just show ones that are open. If I did that, nothing will really exist out in Adams County. Um, if we take all the filters off, we could also do custom filter expressions. Uh, you could do any sort of custom filter you want based on the values that are provided. In the bottom right, there's a little filter icon, which is create a custom filter. And here you could create any sort of custom filters. Um, when you first start, you could click on custom filter and you could choose which layer you want to do it off of. Obviously we're doing it off of the incident data shelters, so that's what you'll select. And you could do either a single expression or a set. Let's just do a single expression right now. So we're gonna add an expression and we're going to want to look at which shelters have at least a total capacity of say 50. So we're gonna go down to total capacity right here on the list. And then you could choose is exactly 50, that might not bring back any results, but let's say is at least 50. We'll put that in, we'll click off of it, and the map will automatically filter. All of the shelters shown here have a capacity of at least 50. If you turn off this custom filter, it will show all the shelters that exist, whether or not they have a total capacity of 50. Uh, we recommend you explore all the different options. You could do multiple expressions, such as a set, which is you could say, show me a shelter that is at least 50 and allows animals. It's just another way to filter what you see on the map. Let's turn off the custom filter and show you all the share option. The share option is a good way to send this map to trusted stakeholders, at least within the edit shelters tab. Obviously, you could just click this share link to this app, and if they have access, they'll see exactly what you're seeing, and it's an easy way to get to it kind of like the QR code or web URL. However, there's this button that says link options. This is really good if you want to 
do a very particular view or zoom and extent level. So you could go in here and you could just send the current map extent, or you could define where the middle of the map is, what your zoom level is, or you could add markers or query a feature. Once you select one of these and you go back the button to the share the link on this app, this URL will change and it will allow you to send, say, a map directly to a shelter that's centered on the map. So you could show a uh, policymaker exactly what you're talking about instead of the overall application. Finally, we want to talk about the add data uh, widget that exists. Um, obviously, you don't want your map to be too busy, but we do have the opportunity for you to add data. Uh, for those of you that have an ArcGIS Online account um, and you're part of a lot of groups, your groups will start showing up under this little dropdown. Um, this is my organization, so NAPSIG Foundation, and it shows I can add over 1,400 items that are within the map extent. Core information needs is something that NAPSIG Foundation set up for the NCR that helps with all hazards planning. This is some of the information that's in there. You could also do overall ArcGIS Online. So there's, you know, 10,000 plus items here. That's all the publicly available layers. Or you could do your own content. So if you create your own content yourself or within your organization, you could add it here. All you have to do is add it to the map and it will start showing up on the layer list. Don't forget, you can also add a URL. So if somebody provides you a REST endpoint, you can add it here. And you can also add a file. I just want to point out that on the public map, you also have the same sharing options that we showed you under the share feature under edit shelters. You could share this app or you could go to the link options and also do a custom view. Again, good to send out for the public information officers so it's not showing the entire region if you really want to tailor it to your own jurisdiction. On the dashboard, the majority of the tips and tricks are shown on the overall training video, but I do just want to highlight again that you can select multiple counties at a time to view the shelters and deselect them as well to see the rest. These status bars and supply cache for both the status of shelters and supply caches only show up that you could filter when you have one of those features available. So if there were no open shelters, there would not be an open button up here. Again, I recommend everyone check out the training videos on the homepage and checking out the technical user guide for GIS and IT. Again, there's a lot of other items we haven't covered today, but I hope this helps you better plan for and prepare for your mass care needs. Thank you.